more than an education issue. This is a parenting issue. It's what do I want for my child? And our biggest reason to homeschool is to be the main influencer and control as many of the influences as our children have as we're developing the chops to survive life, right? So I want them to excel in math and language and history and science, but I really want them to be able to be solid in their faith so that when they step into a situation, um, they're not shaken quickly and don't walk away from their faith. Sometimes we focus on the losses that occur from making the transition from schooling to homeschooling. And I think it's important for us as homeschool parents to focus on the advantages and to create advantages. Our classroom doesn't have walls. The world is our classroom. During the week where other kids are in school, we're able to be out doing and experimenting and learning about life. <music>
that's a challenge no matter what. I mean, if we look at the church, the church um, of the millennials that are leaving the church, like it's an enormous rate of kids that no longer go to church, no longer attend Sunday morning service, and 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 have have stepped away from their faith. So we have to to begin to ask, you know, why? And I think I think that more than an education issue, this is a parenting issue that we have to come down to terms with. It's what do I want for my child? And I think for some, sometimes when you're forced out of a school setting, if you've been in a public school, you've been in a private school, and all of a sudden you're homeschooling, there's like all of a sudden this loss because you're moving away from from the classroom, you're moving away from organized sports, you're moving away from you know all the friends and stuff like that, and 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 so sometimes we focus on the losses that occur from making the transition from schooling to homeschooling. And I think it's important for us as homeschool parents to focus on the advantages and to create advantages. See, I have a private school. I I private school right now. We have four students in our private school. And I'm able to tailor that education to the needs of their student. I'm actually, I, as, like, our classroom doesn't have walls. The world is our classroom. In fact, the galaxy is our classroom. In fact, no, the universe is our classroom. We are learning together about God's creation, the universe. We're learning how to be emotionally intelligent. At 52 years old, I'm learning the same skills that my 14-year-old son is learning as far as emotional intelligence. We're learning to set a mission statement for life together because I realize that sometimes my mission statement has been too narrow and too narcissistic and not broad enough um, to, to step forward. We're learning about social issues together. Nobody else is teaching my students about social issues. We're actually looking at these together and saying, how does, how does this worldview that we're being presented with fit into the biblical worldview that we've adopted as a family that we believe is truth? We're able to venture out of our, of our school district, out of our city and our state, and to go places and experience things. And simple little things that, that during the week where other kids are in school, we're able to be out doing and experimenting and learning about life. And so, yes, there's, there's the cage of school, if you will. We, my kids have been let out of the cage and they are able to experience life, um, but I'm able to control the influencers a little bit better as a parent uh, in a home education environment. Now, one of the dangers I think that, that comes is when you have a, um, the mentality a little bit more of it takes a village to, um, to raise a child, right? So, so we need the village to provide social experience and education and spiritual instruction. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm basically letting them, putting them into the village, right? Um, the danger is I have to accept everyone in the village. I may know the teacher. I may have high props for the teacher in the schools and in this private school that I, that I send my child to. I may have high props for, uh, for the principal and the mission statement, the way he leads the organization. Um, I, may, I may have high props for the pastor of the church that the school is part of, if the school is part of a church. Uh, and, and for the council. But also in that classroom are a number of other students. There may be 20 other students that are in that classroom. And so they're part of the village that is now influencing my student. Okay, but that's not it. Because if they take a bus, if any of you rode buses to school, you know that half of the worst things you learned in life happened in the bus. If you sat in the back three quarters of the bus, you know the things that you learned about life and the words and, and images and the things you saw. And, and even the private school that I went to, um, we had to take uh, the school bus with public school students to the academy. 
when I was the principal of the school, most of our kids, some of them, the parents dropped them off, awesome, but other ones, they actually, the kids, they get on the bus. My daughter got on the bus, she was with public school kids, and drove to the Christian school. Uh, that was part of that experience, and so that was part of the village that was also influencing my daughter. Uh, some of the kids that were in the school, they had older brothers and sisters who were um, out and about in, in the world and in, in, in public school. And so they were bringing influences to the peers in my daughter's social group that, that were um, part of her village, if you will. Uh, the, the parents of students, they, they you know, if, as soon as you open things up, now this is true of any organization. It isn't just a private school. It can also be a church. It can be youth groups. It can be, um, you know, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, Sunday school. Like, I think as a parent, you just have to be thinking, um, as, I, as I open this up, what am I, as my student prepared to face the challenges they may face? And then as I look at the organization as a whole, do, do I see that they are concerned about the spiritual growth of the child? Do I see that there, there are protections in place to protect the student uh, from, like, like, you know, do they make sure that any computer that's in the school is protected and, and, and that there's parental controls on that, that there are background checks on any of the teachers that are in the school. Um, what is the background of the teachers? Because it's the school that I was principal of, a lot of the teachers that we worked with, um, they, were, they were schooled in, in, um, in state colleges and had the same exact philosophies, taught the same courses. In fact, we would have huge fights because they would want to use the same books that, the, that their counterparts in the public school were using. And so we would constantly be in this match of, don't you understand that we're different? And, and so we would have those struggles. Um, you know, you just, I think with the education system, just assuming private is better, I think that you really have to do your homework, right? You wanna make sure that, that the private schools that you're evaluating, that they are committed to the same thing you are, and, and what is the process if something happens to correct that? Because sometimes it's easier to sweep it under the rug. Sometimes it's easier, especially, you know, if there are influential families and, and a game is brought in or a phone or something's brought in or images are brought in and, and other kids see the images. Um, any of these things that happen, like what is the process that we do to, to correct that? Now that can happen in my family too. And so uh, that's why I say I think it's more of a parenting issue in that what my goal is as a parent is to prepare my students for life. I want to prepare my children for life. I do that by teaching them to walk. We teach them to tie their shoes. We teach them to brush their teeth. We teach them all the basic skills that they need physiologically to survive, how to eat, how to do these things. Then I want to equip them socially. I want to equip them so that they're aware of other people, that they're polite to other people, that they're not hateful and mean, and that when they encounter mean people, that they can show love, that they can turn the other cheek, but that they can also protect themselves. I want them to have spiritual, a solid spiritual foundation so that when, um, when they encounter trials and tribulations, when they encounter the challenges to their faith, they're able to stand firm against those challenges. When I think back, you know, and, and also every student is different. I was the kind of student that could stand, like I was more of a leader, so I tended to lead, and not always in a good way, but I tended to lead and I wasn't influenced by what people around me were saying. There are other students that are so influenced by, by what others are saying and what they're feeling and their self-worth and all of these things that happen that I think you have to take all of that into account. For me to blanket say, well, I think private school is better than public school. Um, I think there are good private schools and I think that there may be some really good fits, but as a parent, I'm going to say, you need to do due diligence to make sure that the private schools that you're considering um, are in alignment with your values as a parent. Now, in our, in our system, I was, the par I was the principal of this school. 
Uh, there are things that are important to me. Safety is important to me. And so we went through and worked to make sure things were safe. Um, I wanted accountability with teachers. And so we would have staff meetings. And believe it or not, like still, you know, the village is only as, as healthy as the weakest individuals, right? So when I look at, um, like I remember one day a call comes in and uh, and I get the call and I wasn't on site all the time because it was a smaller school But like one time a call came in and somebody had played a PG-13 movie for first grade students And I was like, what are you thinking? Now that doesn't that's not exclusive there because that happens I, Our kids have been part of a youth group where they're you know 12 13 years old and, and they've played a PG-13 movie for them and I'm like guys if the motion pictures whatever knows that this movie is inappropriate for somebody under the age of 13 for heaven's sakes wouldn't a christian school teacher wouldn't a youth pastor also get that like it's not appropriate for somebody under 13 and so because of that i've had to make some some i had to make challenges to that and fix that but that's just something that we we're cautious of because not everybody's going to hold to the same values or have the same level of discernment that we do. And I think that some of that begins to come with experience too, right? Like, you know, we've been around long enough. I'm 52 years old, I've been parenting for 30 years. I have so much to learn, so much to learn. But I've seen, I have some pattern recognition of some things. And unfortunately, I've watched my daughter who went to school with some of the kids that were in the private school. And I've, I've been so blessed to see the grace of God working in my daughter's life versus some of the kids that she went to school with. And it was far more complicated than the school she went to. There were outside influences like parents and friends and grandparents and all of these things that weigh into this thing. And, 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 and I've watched some of the most heartbreaking and heart-wrenching things. In fact, one of the reasons that I am so adamant about homeschooling is I've, I've witnessed one of our daughter's friends, the two beautiful young girls, they were both six years old, and I can just remember, we took a decision, we said we were gonna homeschool because of the challenges that were happening in a classroom, and I'll, I'll kind of cover that, but, um, and the other family decided they were gonna go a different route, and I just, you know, so they said, we know the teachers, and we know all these things, and all of that, and I was like, um, man, I, I didn't, like I just, I stayed silent. And and I have said in my life after I've watched now 20 years later, 25 years later, the pain in this little girl's life is so heartbreaking that I would never be silent again. Because, you know, people shouldn't have to go through that pain. And, and I've seen the blessing of homeschooling and homeschooling isn't perfect. Homeschool families aren't perfect. Homeschool families screw it up all the time, just as bad as a public school. The things we let our kids watch, the access to the internet, all these different things that happen, we mess it up too. That's why I say it's really, a, it comes down to a parenting issue and a heart issue of it takes a lot of work to raise a godly generation. And, and I am so thankful for the grace of God because if it wasn't for the grace of God, I know that I would have no leg to stand on. So grace of God first, and, and, then, and then just trying to make decisions to prevent influencers to come into our students' lives that are going to lead them uh, away from a path of godliness and the foundations that we've tried to lay. Because those foundations, they're going to be tested. They're gonna be tested when they're five, and they're gonna be tested when they're 25. And when, you, when, you, when you're 25, you have no more influence. Like, I'm learning this, it's hard. At five, I still have the ability to have influence. I have input, I can protect. At 25, I am a spectator in my kid's life. And I get to watch the decisions they make, the influences they have. I get to see all of these things. And so um, I wanna make sure that while I have the ability to have impact, into my students and my children's life, that I am the main influencer and that everybody around me 
is cooperating with the mission I have for my children, which is a biblical mission to raise them up in the nurturing and admonition of the Lord, to bring glory to his kingdom, to be known by God and to know God. That's, that's what I desire. And, and I can handle the fact that when they're tested, sometimes it's like I wince because it's like, here it comes, and you just see the challenge against them. And, and sometimes you see the wall kind of going like this, you know, and you're like, oh man, is it going to hold? Is it going to hold? And sometimes the wall cracks and the Lord puts it together in a different way. And, and that's beautiful too. So grace, grace is grace in every which way. But, um, where was I? Okay, so my, my, my daughter, her first year of school was wonderful. We had a wonderful teacher the first year. She was very focused. She was very consistent. We had good communication. Everything was wonderful. The school felt good. I'm the principal. How bad could it be? The next thing that happens is we, we put her in, you know, she moves up a grade to first grade. Things go good the first quarter. Like, well, all right, things are going good. Something happened. And, and, you know, there were, of course, I was the principal, and so there were a little bit of challenges that had to happen between the, the staff and I, and, and as, we, as we continued to improve the school. But all of a sudden, like, it got bad. And, and, and my, my beautiful daughter's joy of going, not, joy, my, not my beautiful daughter, joy, but my beautiful daughter's joy, her countenance, just changed. Like, We'd put her on the bus early in the morning, we'd take her off the bus late at night, and we basically, she was just, you know, miserable. And then we'd spend the whole weekend kind of trying to, you know, build her back up and invest in her. And, and it was like, we were just, again, spectators, kind of watching this thing happen. And, and she, she began to hate school. And that, that planted a seed, like, you know, the, the brain, the pathways, it planted a seed that we never got away from the rest of, from first grade all the way through to college. Now, in college, it was different, and, and she excelled in college, but all the way through, she basically just bought learning in school because of the experience that she had in first grade. And so we saw that impact, and, and I, I think... I think being able to then, you know, the, as her brothers and sisters came along, we've been able to homeschool, never been perfect. We've never claimed that it was perfect. That's part of why Master Books philosophy works for some families is because it's designed for the real world. It's designed for things to happen and because and, life does happen. And, um, and we're not trying to duplicate school at home, the classroom at home. You know, if we wanted a classroom and we wanted all of that, then we could do that. What we're, what we're looking for is an academy, a learning experience that excels above that. And I can create that. I have the intellect, I have the intuition for my children, and I have the passion for my children that nobody else is going to have. So I can find resources. I can find um opportunities for my children to participate but something else that I'm uh, I'm I'm like you know you only get I wish I could have known this oh, I wish I could have known this it goes so fast and before you know it you're like wow I spent like 20 years fighting and fighting fighting to get ahead to to get a house to get cars to get all these things and in the meantime like my family's grew up grown up like, so that, you know, all these sacrifices that we thought we'd made, the biggest mistake I think we make as human beings is believing that tomorrow is going to be, um, is going to be like today. We don't have that guarantee, and it's not. Tomorrow is going to look different. Next year, one year from today, could look vastly different in your life than it does today. And so understanding how precious the time is with our children and that to, to give them away to somebody else to educate and to train and to spend time with, uh, this is, these are precious years that we have. And, and when they get older, it's, you know, we've launched five. We're marrying, oh, my daughter Joy is getting married this weekend. And I am so proud of her and I love, I love my, my new son-in-law. Um, he beat me in arm wrestling, which kind of offended me for a bit, but, uh, you know, I'm an old dog and that's the way it goes. But, um, you know, 
uh, I every time having that tearing, it's almost like like a child launching is like having to cut the umbilical cord again, and and the pain of birth. It's it's both Kristen and I say that letting go of our children into adulthood is the hardest part of parenting. Like it's not something we enjoy at all. And, um, and, and if I'd known then, 20 years ago, what that experience was gonna be like, I think, I think I would have reprioritized. But I'm so happy that we made the sacrifices we did for Kristen to be able to homeschool and to be home. And there are alternatives to things, there are ways to do it. It, it, it's, it was a priority to us. And I saw the blessing of the Lord. He took care of us time and time and time again as, as we made him the priority. And if we truly believe the word of God, if we believe that God's word is truth, um, he is able to provide for all of our needs and take care of us. And, and so if that's the, the factor, I would just like to encourage you that um, as we've been faithful to the Lord and to raise our children in, 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 the, way of, uh, in the way of Christ, that we have been taken care of and blessed and supported. So, um, man, I, I hope... <laughs> Think of if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I my preference is homeschooling. Our family, for us, homeschooling is the ultimate. Uh, it's a privilege. Like I don't feel like our children lost anything through homeschooling. So that is a privilege that I am so thankful we have the freedom to do that in this country. Because when we, right at about the time, you know, Israel Wayne, his family, when they were homeschooling, it wasn't legal, it wasn't available. And private school was the only alternative to public school. Um, so I, I appreciate the privilege to homeschool and I take full advantage of that. And sometimes I need a little bit of a reset. Sometimes I need kind of reminded of, listen, I can do things with my kids that nobody else could do. We can give them experiences. We can, we can open their world up and, um, and expand their world. What about socialization? That's a tough one, isn't it? Because our kids, we want our kids to have uh, relationships and we want them to have friends and, and all of these things. Um, that is that is the challenge although one of the things that I'll say is when I think back to my private school experience or my public school experience especially that was some of the loneliest times of my life other than being in Manhattan in New York City with a million people right if you're in Manhattan by yourself it is the loneliest place on earth surrounded by a million people it's painful that is how I felt in school. I never really felt connected to the other kids. Most of what we did was peer related, um, even being on a sports team and stuff like that. I just didn't get the benefit from that. And, uh, and then when I went to, to private school, um, really the only relationship of depth that I had was with Kristen, and, um, which, you know, that was a good thing. Uh, I, I definitely, that was the best thing I got out of uh, going to private school or school at all. So um, I think we have to pray about that. The God who is able to provide for even the sparrow or to create a beautiful flower, as he says, that is here today and gone tomorrow, or all the majesty of the universe, that God is able to also provide for our needs. And I think that as a family, we begin to pray and ask, Lord, help us develop relationships that bring glory to your kingdom and, and help meet the need for connection that we have. Um, I think that that's important because um, he, he sees so much more than we do. And, and trying to force it, uh, We've, when we've tried forcing it, sometimes it's just been hard, you know? Especially, some, some of you guys are in the same boat we are, where you move to new neighborhoods or new, and it's tough to connect to a place where, um, you know, 
we were well connected in the community we grew up in. We moved to Arkansas and just connecting with other people and finding people who shared the same uh, commitment and vision uh, with our kids and all of that has been a challenge. And so I empathize with you with that. However, I also believe that um, the, the price of our children maybe not having as broad of a social group far exceeds the negatives of my, of my kids having um, a bad influence who has, who has an ability to lead because I've seen that a lot. And um, yeah, so I, I think it's a challenge. I don't think that there's anything perfect about it. It's messy. I think that you have, you know, we have multiple things. We have moms and dad. There's two different personalities. Usually the goals are, are changing all the time. Then we have multiple personalities with our students. With, with me, with nine kids, every one of those kids is completely different. What one kid could handle, they could have stood in the face of, you know, they were the Joan of Arc, like, man, don't bring it on. I'll take it on, right? I, am, I will destroy you for the Lord. Another one in their faith is, is not as strong and, and is just more influenced by every little breath around them and what's going on and what are people doing and what are they saying? How are they feeling about me? Um, you know, one of my sons, he's always been in your face. In your face. He just, like, no challenge. Um, that's awesome, awesome to watch, but they're not all the same. And so we have all of those variables. And then when we talk about friends and, and opening up to the village, which it, it happens at some point, um, just all the influences and all the things that are going to challenge them. And so I guess the end all of this is I prefer homeschooling because I think it gives me the opportunities to be a better parent. And, and, and it also helps me recover when I'm not as good of a parent. I think private school is great. It's definitely the alternative to public school because if you can do anything to avoid a public education, I believe you should. I don't, it's not about the teachers. Again, it's about the village. It's about all that that means. A public education is much broader than a couple of the teachers that we know. And so in my opinion, um, I, I prefer to, to private school over public education. Um, I think, I feel that in homeschooling, I'm giving my children the best private school that money can buy. And <clears throat> while I'm not paying a lot for it, uh, you know, out of pocket, emotionally, <clears throat> and um, the, the sweat equity in, in investing into my children is, is definitely there. And for our children, one of the things I would encourage you to do is to invest in it. You're the leader of this organization. You lead your school. You lead your academy. You, you, are, the, you are the leaders. And so make it fun. Let's have some school spirit, right? Let's name your school. Uh, there have been videos that I've done on giving your school a name and an identity, picking a mascot, um, letting your kids know, hey, what are you interested in? You want to do karate? Let's do karate. We'll do it during the week when all the other kids are in school. Let's, let's, let's kind of get a little bit of a swagger about the schools that we create. Like, we are going to create the best school in this school district. Nobody can compete against it. And, and, and we can let our kids know, listen, it, it, we can do whatever we want here. You know, we can find individuals. We can find missionary kids. We can invest. We can go on a missions trip. We did that when we adopted our son. We took my oldest daughter and everybody was else in school. We went and did the adoption together. She got that experience, um, phenomenal experience. And, and that's something that was part of her education that we wanted. Uh, she wanted to be a missionary. And so we went and got chickens and I made her slaughter the chickens and, and all the fun stuff that you, you know, you wouldn't do in, in school, but that was part of her education because that's what she was training for. We work a lot on emotional intelligence. I can guarantee you that that's not something that's part of most curriculums. Um, granted, maybe being politically correct is part of some curriculums, but being emotionally intelligent 
and, and being able to remain under control and have a Christ-like attitude and exhibit the fruits of the Spirit in life, that those are things that are part of our school and the learning experience that we have. Uh, my older students, they know how to cook. They know how to buy groceries. I mean, my kids, you know, they could basically, by the time, you know, once you learn to drive, you take on some pretty heavy responsibility and learn how to manage money, buy groceries, do some budgeting, I mean, run errands, all of these things, and um, all of that is developing them. And I, I can say now with five kids out, um, I think I have an exceptional group of students that our school has produced. I think, I think Kristen has been so intentional about um, the curriculum that's been chosen, bringing them in, letting them help choose their curriculum. What public school or private school student actually gets to help choose the books that they use for their curriculum? Like, tell me that isn't awesome. Um, I mean, I think that there's, there's so many opportunities. You know, you could start a business with your child. Like, that's something that you could do. Uh, there are so many different opportunities that you could do to, to offer your students an advantage. In fact, that's a great school name, Advantage Academy. I like that, Advantage Academy. And let your kids know, hey, you you are enrolled in Advantage Academy, baby. This is where we do things other people wish they could do. Like we start learning at the atmosphere most people lose consciousness. And, and take on a little bit of that attitude so that your kids start to. Because I think fear is contagious. Anxiety is contagious. When I begin to feel like maybe my kids are missing out on something, I think I convey that to my kids when I am confident. Like my, my older kids, they played, I, my, my son played piano, my son, other son played bass, Brittany is an incredible drummer, um, and, and we would play worship, we did worship music together and played, you know, in, in church, led a worship team. Like they were doing things, playing in different places and different things. Like the experiences that they got from that was incredible. Not that kids don't get that in another school, but I got to be part of that. And as a family, we got to be part of that. And um, I know I'm ranting and babbling, so hopefully this was helpful to somebody who's, who's kind of on the fence. And my biggest thing is absolutely ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Scripture says, right, the, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our coach. He's our counselor. He brings conviction like he is the guidance system God gave us to, to equip us. And, and when we learn to ask for help and he, he guides us, we make such better decisions. And so as you make these decisions, don't do it based on your fear or what the neighbor is saying or what grandma is saying. Do it, do it knowing that the Lord has led you to something. And I think sometimes we know what the Lord is leading to and we're trying to figure out how to bypass that guidance system. Go with what he's saying. Kristen and I will tell you, the biggest regrets we have is knowing here something wasn't right and ignoring that and doing it anyways. Whether it was, you know, a certain friendship or uh, letting the kids go somewhere and do something, every time we those we felt like we overrode the guidance system we had you know and and those are our regrets and because of a few of those regrets we became very if i reserve the right to say no period like i don't even need an explanation for you if the holy spirit says no he knows why he said no and that's all i'm going on i don't need to come up with an excuse or an explanation all i need to know is what the holy spirit is telling me and I know that the Holy Spirit has told us to homeschool our kids, and so that's what we're going to do. I can, I can make a really good argument and give a good apologetics for homeschooling, but at the end of the day, the reason why we wake up and go through it and do it every single day is because we know that that's what the Lord has called us to. And because He's called us to that, He's going to equip us. He's going to provide strength, courage, wisdom, resources. He's going to give us everything we need to accomplish that mission. And so I would encourage you as well to partner with the Holy Spirit, to ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom in everything. This isn't just about education. This is about parenting. And, and the next generation needs to have leaders. 
They need to have leaders who know that their hope is not in man and the accomplishments of man, but that their hope is in Jesus Christ. There's an entire generation right now that is hopeless. Anxiety is abundant. The generation that's never had as much as they have, and yet they're full of anxiety and hopelessness, depression, suicide. They're leaving the church in masses, and sometimes I understand because the church isn't addressing the needs of the generation that has learned differently and thought differently, but even still, they're abandoning truth, and they're abandoning their faith. Maybe they didn't have their faith, but we need leaders with, who, who are trained up in that generation, and we have that privilege of participating with the Holy Spirit to create the leaders that are going to share the message of Jesus Christ with the next generation. What a privilege that is. That's a big privilege, and I want, I want, I want to be part of that. I don't want anybody else being part of that. So, all right. Well, guys, I won't be, there will be no teaching tips Thursday, and I don't think there's gonna be a live stream on Tuesday, but I will be back a week from Thursday. Um, gonna spend some time with family and enjoy my daughter's wedding and the fruits of 20 plus years of, of investing in this girl. So um, God bless you guys, have a good weekend, and as always, what a privilege and an honor it is to be part of this community with you and to serve you, and um, we are praying that the Lord helps you in your curriculum choosing decisions and, and the decisions you are making for your family right now for such a time as this. God bless you guys, talk to you later.